Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well and having a fantastic week. Now today's video is all about parrot hormones, how to recognize, manage, and minimize parrot hormonal behavior. Now I'm joined today by Pickles, she's gonna chill out on the sand. The boys are over there with David, they're just gonna be peeping away and hopefully a little less noisy than they normally are in my videos. Now it's perfectly normal for your parrot to experience and express hormonal behavior, but it shouldn't be too excess. But luckily there are plenty of ways to try and minimize this hormonal behavior for the benefit of you and your bird. Now hormonal behavior typically occurs between early spring and end of summer, kind of early autumn. And that's the typical breeding season for many species. And that's why they develop this hormonal behavior. It kind of gets them into breeding mode, which I would say 99% of owners don't want because we don't want babies or we don't want females to be laying eggs unnecessarily. Now, some typical examples of hormonal behavior include increased aggression, biting, dive bombing certain members of the family, uh, regurgitating food, showing frisky behavior, should we say? Let's keep it sort of PG. Um, sometimes some feather plucking as well can occur because naturally a female would pluck feathers from her chest or between her legs to line a nest. And if they're doing that as part of hormonal behavior, it may become excessive and become uh, a stereotypic or unwanted um, behavior. Now there'll also be nesting behavior where they'll try and find a nice dark corner and start making some kind of strange noises, um, thrusting their tail feathers into the air. There'll be uh, territorial behavior, fighting with potential cage mates or yourselves over um, their food, toys, just general areas. And as well as this, there'll also be increased excessive screaming. Of course, parrots are loud, it's part of their natural behavior, but hormonal loud parrots are something else. So I've managed to get some clips from my own flock now to kind of give you an example of what some hormonal behavior looks like. Of course, I know already the tips that I can use to reduce the hormonal behavior, so I haven't got everything on film, but I've got a couple of clips to give you an example of some of the behaviors that you might see that might be a little bit unusual to the norm. Now we try our best as parrot owners, but unfortunately sometimes we can actually make this hormonal behavior worse. Uh, unbeknownst to us, there are some things that can actually trigger and make hormonal behavior much, much worse. So first up, which is one of the easiest ones to help with and one of the most important is the amount of sleep that your bird should get. Um, I'm gonna go into how much you'll need at the end of the video, so make sure you stick around to find out how to help these triggers. But if your bird is not getting enough sleep um, and uninterrupted dark sleep as well at that, then that is gonna make them cranky and it's gonna make them exhibit more hormonal behaviors because the amount of daylight can kind of determine whether they believe it to be breeding season and whether they feel that they should be exhibiting these hormonal behaviors. Next up is inappropriate petting. Now you see lots of people on the internet and they're stroking the birds all the way down their back. Oh, it's so nice thinking that they're a dog or a cat. That is unfortunately a very bad thing to do because touching a bird on its back, um, under its wings, on its chest, you're essentially propositioning your bird and you definitely don't wanna be doing that because that is gonna make the hormone behaviors much, much worse. So the best places to stroke your bird are gonna be on the head and on the neck, if they'll let you. Not every bird wants to be stroked, that's something to bear in mind as well. They may well let you um, stroke them in the inappropriate places, but I highly recommend not doing that. Next up are nesting spots. That could be places in the cage where they've got kind of a nice little nook or cranny to uh, nestle up into and start thinking about making a nest. It could be one of those cozy, happy huts. Even if it's made out of natural materials, it is still potentially a hormone trigger. So I'd highly recommend removing anything like that from your cage. Uh, a lot of people think that um, parrots, especially conyers and kaiks, that they need something cozy to sleep in. Oh, it's so cute. Of course it's cute but it is very bad for them for lots of different reasons, including ingesting the fibers from the 
uh, ones that are made out of kind of material, that kind of thing. Totally not good for them. In the wild, birds will sleep on a perch, on a branch, in the trees. They don't sleep in a cosy little lovely fleecy happy hut, you know, they don't nestle into tree husks, they don't sleep in a nest like a lot of people think. They just sleep on the tree branches. They definitely don't need them. It's bad for the potential ingestion of fibres, but it's also bad because they do also promote hormonal behaviour. Yes, there will be some birds who'll be absolutely fine with it, and I know that there are some people who are a little bit funny about the subject, but I would always recommend not having them in the cage because it's too much of a risk. Another slightly controversial one is actually covering the cage at night with a blanket or a sheet or something. People do this to try and give them the right kind of sleep and I know it comes from a good place. There are some people who use um, covering up birds for any inappropriate reasons such as trying to calm them down or keep them quiet which I don't agree with. However, popping the sheet over your bird's cage is going to make a really nice dark cosy space for them to try and nest in. So. I personally don't cover any of my birds, we make sure the room is nice and dark, they have a night light to stop any kind of night frights, hopefully, obviously they still happen for the cockatiels, but I don't recommend covering cages because I think they cause more harm than good. It also creates kind of a pocket of stale air within the cage and with birds having such a sensitive respiratory system, I don't think it's necessarily the best thing to do. Um, and also if the sheet actually gets through the bars and they can get access to it, similar with the cosy huts, if they chew on it and ingest the fibres, that's going to cause some problems as well. Now the last trigger I'm going to mention, this isn't a, an exhaustive list, there'll be lots of different things especially specific to your bird, but the one I'm going to talk about is food. A lot of people don't realise that food can actually cause hormonal behaviours as well. For example, foods that are warm and mushy, like if you make a nice um, sweet potato mash for them, which some people do, or maybe some boiled egg that's still a bit warm, that feels like a nice regurgitated meal from a mate. So. That is something to avoid, absolutely. And also foods that are high in protein, fat or sugar, uh, anything like that can also trigger a hormonal response. So it's worth just checking on the diet, having a look at what you actually feed and adjusting it if you see any of these behaviours really become quite excessive. So if your bird has experienced any of these problems, I'm sure you're waiting to find out how you can help them stop showing so much of these behaviours and make them feel a little bit more comfortable and probably give yourself a bit of a rest as well. Now the first one is to give them plenty of sleep and specifically at least 12 hours of sleep a night and that needs to be dark sleep, not kind of you in the room with them and just throwing a sheet over them as I said, they need to have quiet dark sleep. Now they won't necessarily sleep for the entire 12 hours, but they do need the darkness because it does simulate a different time of year when they shouldn't be expressing hormonal and breeding behaviours. So if they feel like it's a different time of year, uh, sort of winter and autumn time, where there is more darkness and less daylight, then you're going to have a much easier time with their hormones. If you're finding that even though they're getting a reasonable amount of sleep that their hormones are still out of whack and you tried everything else, the other thing that you can do is give them 14 hours of darkness and dark sleep um, and do that for about seven days and then you can decrease that to 12 hours of sleep and just see how you manage but sometimes that can really kick them into the thought process that it's not breeding season anymore, I don't need to be hormonal anymore and I can just start behaving a bit more normally for, for me. Next up, as I've sort of mentioned already, remove those potential nesting sites. That could be your happy and cosy huts, even if they're made out of natural materials. I know they look fun and cute, as I said, but they are not worth it for the potential hormonal behaviours for your bird. Get rid of those, even things like cardboard boxes or little nooks and crannies. You can't necessarily get rid of all of them, but if you can see in the cage back there, we have just a tiny corner which is near um, a unit which has some video games in. And for some reason, Chip finds that as an absolutely fantastic place to get really territorial over, even though there's nothing there. So you can only do as much as you can, but if you can get rid of some of those areas that are really prone to helping express those hormonal behaviours, then you will be better off for it. The other one that I've already kind of mentioned, just to briefly mention again, really to drive it home, is to only pet your birds on the head and the neck, and that's if they'll allow it. Nowhere else on the body should be petted, because they're going to think that you are trying to proposition them and that you want to mate with them, and of course you absolutely don't. So please only stick to the head and the neck for your pets. The next one is to kind of switch up their cage quite often. For my birds, I take out a lot of their toys every single day and change them over so that it always is a nice fresh experience and it kind of eliminates some of that territorial behaviour. So here I've got some of the birds' favourite toys. I've got these ones from Rosewood, they are from the Woven Wonders range in America, they're from Planet Pleasures. Um, also we've got kebabs, these kind of things, nice natural materials, but importantly, 
These are toys that they can shred and chew. They can redirect their behavior onto the toys and they can occupy their mind with making sure that they are getting all of that destructive behavior out, out on their toys and then they haven't got time to think about being hormonal. Now, one of the ways that you can help your parrot refocus its energy and re refocus its mind onto something different during this hormonal period is through training. Touch, good girl. Training is a fantastic way of creating a bond between you and your parrot. It's really sort of mentally stimulating and tiring as well. So getting lots of training into your bird as well as enrichment could be really important to tuck them out, make them think of something else while they are feeling a little bit funny with the hormones and hopefully you can have a good time with it as well. Pickles loves her training, don't you Missy Moon? Should we show some of your training? Ready? Wave! Good girl! You're so clever, aren't you? I actually did a video recently all about kind of parrot training, so I will leave a card up the top and a link in the description. And my boyfriend David has also done some training videos with the boys, so I'll also leave that in the description as well. So make sure you go and check out his video over on his channel. Spin! Good girl! Ready? Shake! Good girl! If you're also really struggling with your bird with biting or getting them in and out of the cage when they are being hormonal, the other thing that you can try is by getting an extra perch in order to get them in and out of their cage. You can ask them to step up onto here instead of your hand. Uh, you can also get a tea perch, so you can hold it under here instead of at the end. Um, and that just kind of eliminates a bit of the fear from you because they can kind of sense when you're a little bit nervous, a little bit unsure, and it's gonna make them less likely to want to step up because it's gonna make them feel unsteady. Um, so if you've got a nice perch, they can step up onto it and you can move them to their play stand, for example, and get them away from that territorial hormonal kind of situation. And hopefully they can start exhibiting some more normal behaviors for you outside of the cage. And finally, it's worth noting that in very extreme cases, there are some veterinary interventions that can happen if your bird is really struggling with their hormones, but that should be an absolute last resort after you've tried everything. And of course, you need to speak to an avian vet. I'll leave some information for UK and US avian vets in the description. If you live somewhere else in the world, of course, get in touch and I'll see if I can help you find someone who is local to you. But any vet that you go to must be an avian certified vet, so you know that they are going to know exactly what they're talking about. So that brings me to the end of the video. I hope you have enjoyed learning a bit more about how to manage parrot hormonal behavior. If you have any questions or anything you're not sure of, please leave it in the comments below. I'd love to speak to you and we can try and work through parrot hormones together. But from me and Pickles, it's thank you so much for watching. Take care and see you later.